The modern world is built on innovation, but some innovations are so profoundly world changing that they stand above everything in the aeons of time. And the crazy thing is, in the last 200 years, there have been five such innovations. But before I share them, first, you've got to remember to subscribe to my channel. Number one. Evidence-based medicine. The medical advancements of the 1800s were such that the United Kingdom went from a population of 10 million at the century's beginnings to a population of 40 million by its end. That means there was a fourfold increase in just 100 years. And this is despite the insane poverty of the era and the countless millions who emigrated to other parts of the empire and the US. However, despite all these advances, which included things like vaccines, sanitary science, and good hygiene in the year 19 a lot of people were still dying from disease and illness. And the child mortality rate, despite having been improved by over 300%, was still 13%. Yep, 13%. That means one in eight children were still not making it to adulthood. And the reason the number was still so high, despite all the advances, was for the simple reason that medicine remained a quack game. Now, what I mean by that is that rather than using an evidence-based approach to select the best treatment methods, doctors and medical innovators instead simply decided what they believed worked best and then expected everybody to accept it without any evidence. Needless to say, a lot of people died unnecessarily due to being given the wrong treatment and that would have continued if not for a Boston doctor by the name of Ernest Amory Codman. In the early 1900s, Codman proposed something called the end result system, which was a super simple system designed to do a super simple thing, document the clinical consequences of a doctor's efforts. So it was basically a survey and the question being asked was, did the treatment given by the doctor actually work? I know it seems common sense, but even considering this, there was a massive pushback by the medical society against this system, mainly because it was exposing a lot of bad actors. And the pushback was so strong, it actually cost Codman his staff privileges at the Harvard University he worked at. But as he was not one to give up, in response, he established his own hospital, which he called the End Result Hospital. And then he wrote a book documenting all the outcomes of the patients who had attended his hospital. And to say the least, they were eye-opening. In total, he recorded 123 errors from just 337 discharged patients, which is the equivalent of one in three getting the wrong treatment. Inevitably, when the public got wind of this, they sided with Codman big style, and the result was the essence of his system becoming the norm in hospitals all over the world. And to say this was revolutionary would be an understatement. Here's why. Pharmaceutical companies, chemists, surgeons, doctors, nurses, in fact, pretty much any person selling any form of medicine or medical treatment of any kind for that matter, suddenly, for the first time in history, had to prove that their treatment not only worked, but was safe. And until they did, they couldn't sell it. The result of this was to spark a healthcare revolution unlike any in history, which can be seen by the fact that it has brought down the child mortality rate to 0.01%. Yep, from 13% to 0.01%. And the craziest thing of all, this approach is is now used not just in medicine, but everywhere from education to manufacturing to investing to this to that to you name it. Even sports use the essence of Codman's system to improve player performance, which means Codman's simple innovation literally sparked revolutions in everything. Number two, the programmable computer. In 1837, English mathematician and inventor Charles Babbage proposed the first digital programmable computer. It was called the analytical engine and was born out of a previous invention of his called the difference engine, which was basically a mechanical calculator. However, as revolutionary as the analytical engine was in principle, it was never completed as Babbage couldn't raise the funding. Yep, that means the father of the computer, as he is known, never got to see the fruition of his work. In fact, it actually took until 1936 for computers to be taken seriously. Alan Turing was the man to capture the attention when he proposed his universal computing machine, or as it is now known, the universal Turing machine. This computer was, of course, just a theoretical device, which Turing proposed in a seminal paper entitled On Computing Numbers. But the workings behind it were so profound, it inspired inventors to start building actual computers. For example, during World War II, 
Turing himself built the bomb, which if you don't know what is, is the mechanical computing device that helped the Allies crack the Enigma code and win World War II. Also created during World War II, but not for it, was the Z3. It was built in 1971 by German inventor Konrad Zuse and was the world's first programmable computer. Then there was the first digital computer, the ENIAC, which was built in Pennsylvania in 1945 by John Morshley and J. Presper Eckert. And eventually, all this progress led to the 1948 creation of the Manchester Baby, which was the world's first stored program computer. Now, to understand why this was a game changer, unlike the Z3 and all the other previous computers, which stored programs using electromechanical processes, this one used electronic, which is the system that allows for all the endless programs we have on our computers today. It was built by Frederick C. Williams, Tom Kilburn and Jeff Tutil at the University of Manchester and the moment it was completed the world changed forever because it ignited a revolution that continues even to this day to change the world on a near yearly basis. Number 3 The Telegraph the more of us who share knowledge and the more of us who can digest the knowledge that people share, the faster the rate that all of us can grow because the faster the rate that all of us can innovate and invent. Here's the thing though, originally the only way we could share knowledge across any length of distance was by horse. That means knowledge could only be shared at the rate a horse could ride. But then along came Samuel Morse who in 1835 invented Morse code and the electric telegraph which was the first means of rapid long distance communication. Communication. This proof of concept that electricity could be used to transfer information across long distances at lightning speed sparked a revolution which eventually led to Firstly, the invention of the telephone by Scotsman Alexander Graham Bell, which happened in 1885. And then secondly, the invention of the World Wide Web by Englishman Sir Tim Berners-Lee, which happened in 1989. Now, if you needed to be told how revolutionary these inventions were, you wouldn't be listening to this video, which means, yep, Morse with his invention of the telegraph changed the world in a way few people ever have or ever will. Number four, electricity. Imagine a world where electricity was nothing more than a curiosity to the intellectuals of the day. That's exactly what electricity was for most of human history. In fact, the only real interest people had in it was in regards to what caused electric eels to shock people and what caused lightning. But then along came English scientist William Gilbert. In the year 1600, he published a book called De Magnet, which contained the results of his studies into electricity and magnetism with a special emphasis on static electricity and the Earth's magnetism. It actually built upon the work of a mariner named Robert Norman who in 1581 discovered magnetic inclination and how to measure it. Now if you don't know what that is, magnetic inclination is super important for measuring the Earth's magnetic field and so for compass points and navigation. Yep, very useful information for the time and needless to say the book was extremely popular and its popularity turned out to be world changing mainly because it laid the foundations for a technological revolution. Here's why. Over the ensuing centuries, his work inspired many others to also research into electricity and magnetism. For example, men like Otto van Guericke, Robert Boyle, Stephen Gray, Charles Dufay, Benjamin Franklin, on the list goes until eventually we reach Joseph Swan, Thomas Edison and Nikolai Tesla. Joseph Swan was the one who first supplied incandescent light to homes and public buildings and in 1880 his house which was called Underhill located in Lowfell Gateshead which is a northern town in England was the world's first to have working light bulbs installed. Thomas Edison was the one who invented DC current and the world's first commercial viable long-lasting light bulb. Nikolai Tesla, the man of all mans, was of course the one who laid the foundations for AC current, which is what powers the world. All in all, these three men along with many others rode the waves of three centuries of progress and gave us a world powered by electricity. And just to emphasize how important their innovative work was for the modern world, imagine if all the power got switched off. Yep, exactly. That's why electricity is one of the most important innovations of all all time. Number five, the steam powered engine. Here's a crazy fact for you. The first steam powered engine was built somewhere between 50 and 70 AD by Greek mathematician and engineer Hero of Alexandria. Yep, that is his name and his steam engine was called the Eolipile or as it's better known, Hero's engine. Now it's important to note that this was not like a steam engine as we think of it today. So it didn't produce power. In fact, it was a very simple device and the consensus is that it was nothing more than a 
curiosity built perhaps to be displayed in a temple so it was a bit like a lava lamp is today just something cool and the crazy thing is it would take another 1700 years for someone to actually build a steam engine that was more than just a curiosity Englishman Thomas Sabry was the man to do it in 1698 he invented the world's first commercially viable steam powered device it was a steam pump designed to drain water from mines and is often known as the Savory engine but despite how brilliant this was it was not a game changer the game changer came from fellow Englishman Thomas Newcomen in 1712 he created the world's first commercially viable piston powered steam engine which he called the atmospheric engine its purpose was just like Savory's to drain water from mines but its piston design was light years ahead so much so it laid the foundations for the industrial revolution and with it every revolution that has since followed even the electricity revolution yep in 1882 the first power stations were built one in new york and one in london and guess what type of power stations they were steam electric the crazy thing is that's still true even to this day the majority of electricity comes from steam electric power that means the invention of steam power has given us everything we have in the modern world cars phones trains planes the internet lights life-saving treatments this that literally everything when you talk about an important invention it's pretty much impossible to top that that's all from me thanks for watching if you enjoyed this remember to give it a like and subscribe to my channel because the more who do so the more of these short histories i can make is that a good bribe i hope it is i'll see you next time